Hi, this is Shahab with Amazon Web Services. In this section, we are going to take a look at how to use Amazon Simple Queue Service, or SQS, in your .NET application. Amazon Simple Queue Service is a fully managed message queuing service that makes it easy to decouple and scale microservices, distributed systems, and serverless applications. Let's take a look at some characteristics of Amazon SQS. Amazon SQS is a fast, reliable, scalable, and fully managed message queuing service. It makes it simple and cost-effective to decouple the components of a cloud application. Amazon SQS is a buffer between the application components that receive data and those components that process the data in your system. Also, SQS ensures delivery of each message at least once and supports multiple readers and writers interacting with the same queue. Also, most of the time, each message will be delivered to your application exactly once. So you should design your system to be idempotent. Now let's take a look at the differences between Amazon SQS and SNS. They are both messaging queues, but there is a slightly differences between them. For example, when it comes to keeping the data, Amazon SQS is persisted. However, Amazon SNS is not. Also, Amazon SNS uses push mechanism to push the notifications to the client, and Amazon SQS uses the pull mechanism. So the clients, they need to pull the, queue, the messages from the queue. And at last, Amazon SNS has a one-to-many publish subscribe method. However, for SQS, it's a one-to-one send-receive mechanism. Now let's take a look at Amazon SQS queue types. There are two different queue types for Amazon SQS. There is the standard queue for which the message ordering is not guaranteed, messages may be duplicated, and throughput is nearly unlimited. And we have FIFO queue, which message ordering is preserved, messages are only received once, and throughput is limited. Now let's take a look at some key concepts. When a consumer takes a message from the queue, it's provided with a receipt handle. A receipt handle is a very important component because you need the receipt handle to delete the message from the queue. Also, the visibility timeout is a very important concept. It's the period of time that a message is invisible to the rest of the application after an application component gets it from the queue. So in this way, it prevents multiple components from processing the same message by locking the messages. Also, when the application needs more time for processing, you can change this timeout value dynamically via change message visibility operation. When the process is finished, the component which received the message will delete it from the queue. And if processing fails, the lock expires and message becomes available again. Now let's take a look at some more key concepts. When it comes to receiving messages, Amazon SQS supports both long polling and short polling. Please remember that short polling is the default method. Also, Amazon SQS supports dead letter queues. It means that messages that for some reason cannot be successfully processed, they will be sidelined and isolated, so you can analyze these messages in the dead letter queue later to determine the cause of failure or if you want to retry the operation. Now let's take a look at some basic queue operations that Amazon SQS supports. There is a full list of APIs provided in the URL I have provided in the bottom of the screen. However, the more important ones that I've put it together are create queue, set queue attributes, get queue attributes, get queue URL, list queues, and delete queues. Please remember that through the get queue, uh, create queue, you can set delay seconds and visibility timeout, which are very important for the purpose of your application. Now, let's take a look at how to use the SQS APIs in a .NET application interface using Visual Studio. In Microsoft Visual Studio, you can always see the Amazon SQS under Amazon Explorer window. You can always expand the tab and see the name of the queues that you already have created. In order to use the Amazon SQS APIs in, the, uh, in Visual Studio, I'm going to use a sample application. Let's go to File, New, 
project, under Visual C Sharp AWS Samples, you should be able to see App Services. Click on SQS Sample and click OK. You are allowed to choose the profile and region in this screen. You can always change the screen in the app.config file later. Also, in order to use Amazon uh, SDK for SQS, you always need the proper NuGet package. Here, this sample already has the NuGet package downloaded and installed. If you are working on a new application, you just need to right-click on dependencies, go to Manage NuGet Packages, and search for AWS SDK, AWS SDK, SQS, and you can click on it. Here, since it's installed, I can uninstall or update it. In your case, you should be able to see the install and click and install it. Since this is a console application, everything gets started from the program.cs file. Let's take a look at program.cs. As you can see, we are importing Amazon.sqs and sqs.model. These libraries are required for you to use SQS APIs in your .NET application. If you are creating a new application, you should import these libraries or use them. In order to use Amazon SQS, you need to create a client. This client should be of type Amazon SQS client. After you have the client created, you can use this client to create a queue, to list queues, to send messages to the queues, or to receive messages from the queue. For each operation, you will need a request. For example, SQS request to create a queue just requires a queue name. Here in this scenario, we can call it my AWS queue to create a queue name. Also, after you created a queue, to list a queue, you also need a list queue request. The list queue request doesn't enforce you to pass any arguments. When you want to send a message, you need to create a send message request. The minimum information you need to provide for the send message request is the queue URL and a message body. And I'm going to call it, this is my new message text from AWS. At last, when you want to receive a message, you need to define a receive message request. The minimum thing you need to provide is the queue URL. After you do that, the message can have, the response can have one or more set of messages. You need to go through those messages and you need to pro uh, process them in a way that you want. Please remember, as I mentioned before, the response to receive message will return you a receipt handle. You need this receipt handle if you need to delete the request when you are done with processing. And you need to delete the process, the request, after you are done processing. To order to call the delete request, you need to provide the queue name or URL and also the receipt handle. Always, also, you can cache the SQS exception to any SQS API call that can tell you more information about if anything goes wrong. Now let's run this application, start without debugging, and let's see how it works. So it did create a queue called my queue, and then print list of Amazon SQS queues, and you can see my AWS queue is here now. Then we send a message to my queue, in this case is my AWS queue, and we got it. And it says that it could receive the message, this is my new message text from AWS, and at last we deleted the message. In this example, I did show you how to use SQS APIs in your .NET application. In this video, we went over how to use Amazon SQS in your .NET application. Thank you for watching.